Hello and welcome to my film review of The Hobbit Part 2, The Desolation of Smaug. I'm joined here by Imminent Al. Special guest Alex. Yeah. yeah. Um, so. And we'll be doing a bit something a bit different today. We'll be dis discussing aspects of the film rather than me just talking to the camera for 20 minutes. Um, yeah, we're back round. Really, really just talking to the camera normally turns into um, sort of... Uh, yes. Angry speeches. Sometimes. Um, so, bit of background. I've read The Hobbit. Don't remember too much of it. Alex has read The Hobbit and he remembers most of it. <laughs> most of it. Who's the main character again? Uh, I think it was Frodo. Uh, Frodo Skywalker or something. The opening! Well, do, do, do. Yes, the opening. There we are. That, that's, that's why. Right, okay. So, the film begins like... Basically, they're at the camp, and sort of... No, they're in Bree. That's right, and then they come across the skin changer. What? No, it starts off with Gandalf, and they're in the pub. Oh, oh, right, yeah, no, yeah, there's the flashback, yeah, I forgot. Flashback, with you, flashback. So, so there's the flashback with Thorin, and he's like, We should go on a journey. Uh, and then they do. His voice. So, yeah. Did, did so you like was... the inclusion of the flashback? Should we talk about that? I mean... Yeah, it was, I mean, it didn't serve too much of a purpose. It was kind of like Gandalf going like, Hey Thorin, do you want to go on a quest? Which he was obviously going to say yes to, because... I we've like seen, quests. <laughs> we've quests seen, are fun. We've already seen part one where Thorin is on the quest. So, it was It was kind of five minutes of unnecessary kind of things. Yeah, but it was charming return to Bree. We saw we saw Peter Jackson munching with, carrot. With carrot again. You yeah. Didn't, you didn't spot him. I had to punch no, him out. I, I I missed the cameo uh, apparently. So yeah. So then they so we go back to sort of you know them on the quest. Bilbo's all kind of like being chased by um, sort of Azog. His orc, yeah. Orc pals. And uh, then he's like, oh, I got the ring and stuff. I should tell Gandalf. Uh, actually, that was a pretty interesting part where he was like, "Oh, Gandalf, I found something." It's like, "Oh, this is interesting," and then he's like, "Oh, I found my courage," and it's like, ah, "Right, okay, this is my Gandalf." I found my keys. Yay! I'm already in his bed. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, so the skin changer guy was pretty cool. Bjorn. Yeah, he was sort of he was from ABBA, uh, formerly he was one of the singers. He was, you know, lovely. Oh, guy. Yeah. A joke they even have a risk with uh, <laughs> no um so the okay the first main part of the intro the opening was the foresty bit foresty bit yeah um <clears throat> so that that was that was pretty interesting that that felt more kind of questy so rather than like oh we're gonna see this guy then we're gonna see this guy so like they felt like they were going in a direction sort of which is pretty pretty good yeah, I mean, am I allowed to talk about the book now? Yeah, yeah, yeah you can compare like... Uh, okay, well, yeah. it, it felt a bit strange in that they seem to be kind of in the book. They asked Bjorn if they could go into his house and sort of shutting him out of his own house. I think I would be angry if people did that first. Yeah, I mean, it sort of... a little odd, but it worked. Yes. It was fine. No complaints. Yeah, the, the bear shape-shifting was pretty cool. Um, so, yeah, so the forest was kind of trippy. I was, you know. Oh, are we on to um, Mirkwood now? Yes. Right, okay, so we've, we've gone past Bjorn. Um, yeah, I think they seem to miss out a lot that was in the book to do with Mirkwood and sort of created their own stuff, which... Yeah, I mean, the part where, Fro no, where Bilbo, Bilbo saw himself was a bit... I thought look, it was fine, but I think... Yeah. In the book, it's a much sort of a longer, drawn-out bit, and they're kind of gradually starving to death and getting thirsty, and mm. they kind of end up in the spiders by accident. Yeah, I mean, I, I did I feel like... I, it, I didn't see why they needed to kind of reimagine that, but it worked. I think we could tell that there's something bad about the forest. Yeah, the, the forest did feel like, oh no, we're a bit lost. Oof, well, that was half an hour wasted. Rather than like, no, you're trapped in here for days, it was horrible kind of stuff, you know. It was sort of, he popped up the trees, oh, there we're going, and it's like, there we are. Yeah, I think, if I remember from the book, there's a sequence where there's, there's several, they have to cross a, an evil river that's somehow cursed, and hmm. I think Bomber falls in, and yeah. it's kind of implied that he's been knocked out for days, and they're, yeah. they're not having any food. So, 
Yeah, I, I do it, remember... It felt yes. more like an inconvenient detour. Like. Yeah, I do remember reading that part of Mirkwood and sort of... The only thing that stuck with me about the for, like that part was like, this goes on for a while, doesn't it? Sort of, they properly got lost, but the movie is like, let's well, breeze through it forever. Um, so, spiders! Yeah, so spiders. So, I'm not a massive oh, oh, fan of spiders. I mean, the scene when Bilbo climbed the tree, that was taken from the book, The Blue Butterflies. That was mm. a very pretty scene. Yes, it is very... Life of Pi esque sort of. You know, Life of Pi. Um, so yeah, so we get into the spider den nest thingy. The sort of Peter Jackson likes spiders, doesn't he? Because you, you know the kind of ground spider thing that came out. And yeah. I'm sure that was in King Kong. I'm sure. Yeah, well, I'm sure that was. A, I'm gonna have to go back and watch Peter Jackson's King Kong. Yeah, now. in the in the big spidery nest like part where you saw all the spiders. I was just thinking like, huh, this reminds me of King Kong, but. Hang on, that was the same director. It's like, it, he he has something about portraying spiders kind of terrifying the main character, because... Well, I mean, to be fair, that's... Well, he's, yeah. as he's made Lord of the Rings, King Kong, and... Yes, yeah, so all mean, of them contain... Spiders that are nasty. Yeah, and but I think in King Kong he was trying to recreate a scene that had been lost, that was in the original film that... that ah, I see. Footage. But, but yeah. yeah, I think they kind of... The evil spidery thing that Bilbo kind of killed in anger to get the ring back. Yeah, that was impressively like brutal. Yeah, there. so he went for a little golem um, sort of thing. Yeah, because I mean Bilbo up until that point was like he's willing to stab and kill things, but sort of you know desperately, but sort of that thing got the sort of ring and he went apeshit. He sort yeah, of probably he, he wanted his ring back. Also, that part where the dwarves pull off the legs of the spider, that was, uh... Have we given the spoiler warning yet? No. Uh, right. Oh, ooh, actually, yeah, that's a good point. Well, we've got up to a point... It's not really... I mean, this is in the first ten minutes, twenty minutes of the film. And, like, it is three hours long. So, if you want to avoid any more spoilers... Yeah, you probably need the toilet by this point. Uh, don't, don't drink yeah. a lot before going in. Yes, def definitely don't. Or hold it for a while. Yeah, take some Imodium so you don't need to go to the toilet or anything. Um, so, if you want to avoid any more plot spoilers, go to this point in the video, and we should have passed the plot, and we'll be talking about the acting and stuff. Yeah, Ridian has probably done something magical here, and a big number is flashed up on scene. Yes. So um, we. I mean, for the rest of the video, we probably shouldn't talk about many more spoilers. Um, but we will. Yeah. So, okay, near the end of the opening, or sort of the beginning of okay, the film... Okay, if we're classing Mirkwood as opening, then spiders, and then elves arrive! Yes, I, I'd say elves is the end of opening, so sort of the elves were... Well, Gandalf has disappeared. We want to talk about... No, hang on. Gandalf. Yeah. Gandalf has disappeared. We haven't seen where he's gone yet. Yeah, he's think. basically left and kind of gone like, we'll oh, we're well, going on a quest. We're already on a quest, Gandalf. We're going to do a double quest. Dick, I'm a wizard, I can do lots of quests. <laughs> Your quest amateurs, I can do three quests at once if I want to. So yeah, so was bar was the barrel escape part the opening, would you say? Or, or mm, like no, I think no. I think barrel escape is probably about an hour in. I don't know. Yeah, it's okay. very long. It's not a complaint, it's just true. Yeah, I mean it, it's pretty difficult to separate the parts of the film apart from a rough timeline in my head really, because it's like so, okay, we meet the elves and sort of the... Yeah, I think we've got to spend a bit of time on the elves. We meet Femalas. Yes. Who is the... the character that has been written into the script. Yes, we'll discuss that later the... when it comes to book comparison, but sort of... Initial impressions of Femalas? Or I mean, I, I liked her. I, there was totally nothing wrong with her. And, like, uh, I'm not sort of... I'm not saying she's a bad character or inclusion was unnecessary. It's just... At points, it kind of felt pandering as kind of like, hey, here's a female action character, sort of. I mean, I, I realise the inclusion was because the book itself was written as quite a male-heavy kind of thing, where sort of like, ah, yes, the women are off doing the dishes and stuff, sort of. So I understand why they wanted more prevalent role, but sort of, a few of the scenes are kind of just like, hey, look, she can shoot things, and it's like, okay, we, we, we get it, all elves can do that. Is is it just a yeah, beer? Yeah, elves are fun. But yeah, I mean, the whole sort of, like, love thing with Legolas was... Or rather... 
she well, she wasn't allowed to love him or whatever. Well, I don't well, think it detracts from the plot. We'll come no. back to this when it comes to book. Yeah. Um, so well, equally, I wouldn't have been sad if they'd said, I'm sorry, we're not going to include Fenelas anymore. Yeah, I mean, if sort of, if she died off halfway through the film... I mean, I'm, I'm predicting a death coming, because yes. that she's going to marry Keely, or Feely, whichever one was the oh, yeah. thing in the love triangle. Keely, I think? Ke we'll, we'll say Keely for now. Yeah, um, so yeah, but if she died halfway through the film, it, it wouldn't have impacted her. Anyway, so Legolas, we saw Legolas as well. Uh, you know, he was... I mean, I think he had as much screen time as um, Femalas. Yeah, I mean, obviously he's not in the book, but... Yeah, but... I think the glasses age and must indicate that he was technically there during all of... Yeah, this, I mean... So. Again, the film fell a bit pandering to Legolas. It's, it's the problem with both of the elves, kind of, in that... We want more elves. It, it did kind of feel like, sort of like, oh, the elves seem to be really popular in the first one and people hope to see more of them. It's like, right, how are you going to do this? Oh, we're just going to insert elves everywhere. And it's like, right. Well, I think, do you remember you were talking when you saw the first film or when you see Lord hmm. of the Rings about how they kind of introduced all these races and then just talk about boring old humans for all the Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Yes. So it's nice you get to sort of yeah, see I mean, a bit I mean, more of what's going on, what other races are up to. Yeah, it, it was it was actually nice to see sort of... Because in The Hobbit Part 1 I felt that sort of they, they kind of brushed over the elves. They, sort of, they were there, the dwarves didn't really like them, they went and kind of... You, you get to see more of a sort of actual elf life in this movie rather than like, Oh, you're our guest, sit down and... You know, yes, yeah, so we also learn they can get drunk. Yeah, apparently that was a uh, book thing. Well, that, yes, that was in the book. That it was, was really a bit hard. Confusing. They kind of set it up in. I think it was Return of the King film where Legolas finds it very hard to get drunk. So hmm. it must indicate that elf wine is very strong. Yes, it's. I'd imagine it's the same as sort of because they find it really hard to get drunk. They probably make really strong alcohol. So I say roughly the end of opening was introduction to elves, kind of you know. Capture yeah. the dwarves. Yeah, was that? Yeah, well, I mean, uh, well, I, I don't think any of this is technically the opening. But well, no, I mean, like, yeah, the first sort of... arc of the film. Yes. So, so there was a bit of kind of nice Tolkien -y lore going on with the elves. So, mm, like elf races, no, but Legolas and Thranduil, Legolas's dad, are the blonde-haired elves, uh -huh. and they're. They rule over the brown haired elves who are a different race of elves. I see. Right. And I think Tolkien sort of states that the brown haired elves are a bit more kind of. Well, the brown haired elves have never been over to the Undying Lands. They're kind of. Ah, more, they're right. more party elves. Yeah. I see. Well, that, that concludes opening. Opening. Uh, right. Do you want to take a break? Sylvan elves. I think Legolas is a Sylvan elf and I'll probably able to check this out. Okay. Anyway, el yeah. elf races, so that was there and implied. So Papa Legolas didn't want Legolas going out with lesser type of elf. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it's, it's an interesting plot point to sort of... It sort of introduced a love triangle that was not really that necessary, but you know... Yeah. Can elves and dwarves have babies? <sighs> the only one way to find out, I guess. Rule 34. Uh, no, don't link any Rule 34. Consult the appendices! <laughs> I imagine Tolkien probably did write something about it, sort of the compatibility charts of, like, you know... If you well, one thing Tolkien did say was that female dwarves had sort of beards, but they, yes. they were beardless in the first film. So. I mean, maybe they have kind of very short beards. Hmm, the stubble. Maybe Gram they should... Grandma type beards. Yeah, you know, maybe the sort of, you know, the, the Western concept of beauty is overrunning them and they have to sheathe it all off. So, middle Bar Barrel, part. We'll have Barrel Ride. Oh, no, we'll have Gandalf first. So yes. Gen Gandalf goes to Angmar and Ooh. goes into the Nazgul tomb and sees that it's empty. Oh, yeah, and then he uses the spell. And there's no? No, no, um, no, 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 sorry. No, you've jumped ahead there. Uh, yes. No, that's... Don't get ahead in your Gandalf action. Right. I can't remember what happened either. So he climbs the sort of precarious looking staircase that... Oh yeah, and he gets in. And he gets in and then 
Oh no, there's a Nazgul behind him, but it's not a Nazgul. It's Radagast, yeah. who's back with a vengeance. Yes, Radagast's inclusion... You know, is, is okay. It's... Well, I think now you've set up this character, you've got to keep including him. Yeah, I, I mean... Sort of... It, it it's the same it's the same deal as female Legolas in that they're kind of just like oh, these people seem pretty popular in the first one let's stick him in the second one I mean I know he filmed all three at once so or I'm assuming happened well it was originally intended to be two I think two films. I see I love it hideously long yes well what I'm assuming he did was that he he shot like every scene he could conceive of. And then he, like, basically, once the first one came out, he gauged for reaction and then edited the second part accordingly. So this is just a guess. I don't know any of this. I imagine the first film was supposed to kind of end around Barrel Ride or something, maybe. Yeah. So Spiders might have been the kind of climax that they finished about there. Ooh. Yeah. Well, so, yeah, the Gandalf bit was... Gandalf didn't have much action in this one, sort well, of... there's the, the end bit. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's there's that. Um, so then, after Gandalf's bit, it's Barrel it's Ride. Yeah, Barrel Ride. Or rather, well, imprisonment first. So imprisonment. The so dwarves are in prison. A bit, bit more dwarf elf tension. Yeah. Thorin can't trust Thranduil. I mean, yeah, it, I I didn't I didn't hate the part that part. Really, you know, no, it was fine. They sort of did a bit of this kind of weird thing where he looked at him and his face went all funny. Yeah. A bit like in the mummy, which is Hmm. And um, you know, the the sort of it felt slightly forced with the romantic kind of well, not romantic, but sort of like Thorin was talking to that woman is like right, okay. But yeah. it didn't feel too bad. It it felt like she's just part of the elves and kind of Yeah, elves are cool. Yeah. I mean they seemed kind of dickish and uh Thorin kind of well, basically doomed them to a hundred years in the dungeon. I mean, everyone was a bit dickish there. I think it's yeah. probably nicely showing that elves aren't all shiny and nice all the time. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it was a good inclusion, I suppose. Um, so then we had a bit more imprisonment, and then Bilbo arrives! Yay! Whoa! And he escapes, and he comes up with a cunning plan to get them out via barrel. Now, yeah. this was sort of basically a scene taken from the book, but yeah. apart from the fighty bit. So, yeah, the, the barrel so, scene... So, it, it, yeah, in the book they just get... They pack themselves in the barrels and they arrive at Lake Town and this, it was... Yeah. I mean, probably to talk a bit about kind of the, the goblins, so... Hmm. Yeah, so uh, in the book they're still after them vaguely, but they kind of give up after... Yeah, I mean... So it's all to do some... with Azog, so we meet Azog's son Bolg, who is now sort of taken over his dad's job and is following them... So they decide to. So they see he's escaping and they ambush them in this. Yeah, I mean the fight. The uh, to be fair, the barrel scene was my second favorite bit of the film. It was. I, I think goblins have got a bit more interesting. Goblins or orcs or whatever they're called. I mean, this one got more interesting because I mean, Azog felt a bit forced in the last one. But yeah, I mean this. this now, feels... now he's out of the way a bit. It's a bit. Yeah, it feels a lot more natural than that. In the last one, it was kind of set up that. The guy who were just chasing them all of a sudden became the evil guy of the movie, which is like, it did feel very false in that instead of just having like, oh no, there's goblins after us, like, oh, they're not only are goblins after us, but this one specific one, I hate my enemies and stuff, and it's like, right, okay, it didn't, you know, sort of. So dwarves and Bilbo escape in barrels. Yeah. Orcs try to get them. So thrilling barrel scene. I mean, so everyone's the, fighting. Yeah, it's it's a solid like ten minutes of just barrel scene so action, which jumping Legolas and Femelas are doing their. Yeah, things. I mean, the inclusion of Legolas in there, I think he reached the same badass level as when he took down that Oliphant and thing. Like, I mean, it was yeah. certainly a reimagining of the scene in the book. But yeah, this felt very Hollywood. At this point, he was clearly just going like, look. We need lots of people, lots of orcs and goblins to die. We need loads of fighting. Well, I think in, in the book it came from the tension was well, will they drown or not? And yeah. The uncomfortable barrel ride. Yeah. So I mean, I, I I'm really, not going to judge this scene negatively because it was certainly fun. Yeah. I mean, I sort of 
what whilst it came off as feeling sort of Hollywooded and kind of I think re reimagining yeah. is the key word here. So the yes. material from the book is here, but a lot of it has been reinterpreted by Peter Jackson to kind of turn a tiny children's novel into three three hour films. Yeah, and I mean the action it was pretty intense to be fair, sort of it it wasn't just like Oh, I'd knock this guy on the head hilariously and he falls in the water. It's kind of like, you know... Um, yeah, so it's, we'll just speak up a bit. So Barrel yes. rides over, they meet Bard. Oh, yes, is, Bard, the, the barge, barge guy. guy. Who sort of... The barge guy who they happen to come across, who happens to be, like, the most important guy in town, sort of. Yeah, so... Apart from... Another the, character from the book who has been expanded upon... Yeah, he, he sort of, they just happened upon one guy that everyone in the town already knows but sort of either loves or hates. And it's a fantasy novel, we can forgive that. Yeah, I um, guess. That's a fantasy film. So yeah, so and they get in his barge, yeah, uh, they hide... Hide under fish. Under fish. And we're just going through the plot here. This is obviously what you want, viewers. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I so, mean... But Bard, and Bard and Lake Town, so... Yeah. Goblins oh. keep up chasing them, but they disappear for the time being. Right. So. Everyone's Welsh in which is Everyone is Welsh in Nick Town is fucking apart, glorious. Apart from Stephen Fry. Yes. It it, it was one yeah, of those moments. There like, could be a sort of message here, so sort of Welsh people ruled over by a kind of sinister English overlord. I did actually get that, because I because it took me a while to realise they were all Welsh, because I thought, okay, those kids have a Welsh accent. I'm like, that guy does. I was like, wait, that guy does. So, Hang on, all of Lake Town do. And well, then it, apart from Stephen Fry and his kind of sinister, snivelling system. Yeah, it kind of struck me as like, right, all of the people here are Welsh, and the ruling people are English. And it's like, historically speaking, this is kind of like trying to mirror a bit of something here. In that, like, anyway, in the English let's talk about Stephen Fry. Yes, Stephen Fry. I, um, I, I, I was a bit, wasn't necessarily looking forward to this. Stephen Fry stuck him in everything. Yeah, it, I think I was worried it was going to be Sherlock Holmes 2 again. Yeah, there, there was a danger that this was going to be like, huh, well, you know, Hollywood loves Stephen Fry, so like, let's put him in as a lovable quirky British quirky. actor. Yeah, exactly, but in this one he he was just an unlikable guy, sort of. Yes, he was Dickensian villain. Yeah. Um, if anyone remembers Last Christmas, possibly, he was in a sort of spoof Dickensian um, TV show called... The old shop of stuff, hmm. where he was just sort of played the kind of stereotypical evil nineteenth-century lawyer character, and I see. He was basically playing the same character in this. But yeah, I mean, he did it very well. Yeah, I, I like this performance this kind because of evil, grimy character. I was worried there'd be a point where like he'd be all evil, and he got actually I love all you dwarves, and so like well, he'd help well, them. Well, out he did do that, but it was sort of yeah. You could see it was for political advantage. Yeah, sort of he. I, I, I just thought the sort of like Bard would walk in with the dwarves and he'd be like, What are you doing here? And then like two minutes later they'd be partying down, he'd give them weapons and he'd turn out to just be a bit grumpy or something. But no, he he was a dick till the end and sort of Yeah, so I think they're they're setting you up nicely to be the sort of villain of the second or third film rather. Yeah, I mean Hopefully. E even when he accepted the dwarves and stuff, he wasn't sort of like, I like you guys now, it's more like yeah, I, so I have was, some stuff to gain. Sort of conflict going on between Bard the Dwarves and yeah. Stephen Fry, the master of Lake Town. So. Also, I will say though, Stephen Fry's wig, even if it was meant to look I bad, think it was meant to look like a bad wig. Yeah, it it just didn't suit him. It was kind of like if I'd given you sort of like some carpet or something. It's like Alex, is your hair? Yay, hair! He kind of, just wore something. It, it it didn't look very. But yeah, whatever. That's the phone. Good. Mm -hmm. We'll talk about Stephen Fry some more. I'll just film my phone yeah. conversation. Oh, I see. Right. Um, I mean, and it's fine. Uh, like I've I've got. Well, thankfully, it's pretty good. Yeah. Maybe the money. Oedipus will die. Yeah, okay. I mean... 
Yeah, right, so okay, we, sorry. We, were, we were both hoping for kind of a scene where Stephen Fry would comically take down some orcs. Yeah, know. I mean... The, that the, was this... Yeah, it, it was expected that sort of they'd break in, he'd bludge one by mistake, and he'd be like, Oh, what did I do? <laughs> sort of bring down the curtain, and then the curtain would catch fire. Yeah, but thankfully they totally avoided no, that. No, 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 um, I, I wanted that. That would have been... But yeah, but so the orcs kind of... They started attacking as kind of the yeah, orcs Yeah, it, it seemed a bit odd... Oh uh, yeah, so some of the dwarves got left behind. There was a scene which wasn't expecting where the dwarf who was in love with Femalas, be that Thele or Keely, yes. hit by a poison arrow. Oh yeah, he was poisoned and dealt with. Yeah, we're, we're, we're missing out a huge amount here in our pathetic plot summary. So yes. he's poisoned. Uh, so he gets left behind with um, other dwarves. There's three of them. Bomber. J J James Nesbitt. No, Bomber's, Bomber's there, I think. No, isn't Bomber James Nesbitt? No, James Nesbitt. Bomber, Bomber is the... Boffer? I, I think it's Bofa. Right, okay, Boffer or Bomber. Anyway, but Bomber so is the fat one. Right, okay, it's Bofa then. So James Nesbitt is left behind, sort of, and a few others. So yeah, so there's there's another gratuitous Legolas, Femalas action yes. scene. Where sort of they're running around... Um, yes, and then before that players. we had a nice kind of elfy discussion. How come the evil grow so strong? Oh, yeah. oh, and that's... Is that a flashback to when they decapitated the orc chief guy? Uh, Legolas and his father, or was that... That's not a flashback, that was... That was early on in the film. That was that it? was just after they left, so they take an orc prisoner and interrogate yeah. him and stuff. Oh. And also shows that elves... Don't get captured by the elves, they don't treat prisoners very nicely. Yeah, that, that was... they're, they're not going to sort of send you to a nice prison camp. They'll basically just kill you. That was impressive, the beheading. I was like, oh, okay, I didn't expect that, fair enough. Yeah, so, no, yeah. It's, it's a nice cutting line there. It's like, I did free him from his life. Yay! Yay! But yeah, um, so the dwarf set off to the Lonely Mountain. Um, and the, then there's the door dilemma. Well, they promised to wait for Gandalf, and Gandalf doesn't show up. So yeah. should, we, should we turn to Gandalf? In... Yeah, let's go. So Gandalf, Gandalf and um, Radagast turn up. At Dol Guldor, home of the necromancer. Yeah. And I think they decide there's some kind of concealment spell on it. Yeah, so Gandalf does like a big kind of mm, area effect. Breaking the spell, and as I was there, yeah. lots of orky pals. So he tells Radagast to go back and go and get help or something. And he realises it's a trap, goes in. And he does some magic for once, which is nice. Yeah. Does some staffy things. Some magic kind of works for a bit, and then kind of, you know. Um, but yeah, and then so after that fight thing, he kind of... So we get to meet the necromancer, who we did meet earlier, but we didn't talk about his introduction. He's basically a kind of talky shadow before. Yes. So oh, yes. They're, they're, they're hinting nicely that he's Sauron, so you kind of see a big eye, and then a figure walking out of it. And... Yes, and then it kind of... Within the, figure, within the figure is the eye with the figure walking out, um, kind of goes through. If you've seen the music video of Seven Nation Army with the white stripes, it's basically that. So uh, Gandalf, I, Gandalf's staff melts, and then the next time we see him, he's like hung in a cage, and there's orcs marching out. Yes. Um, and then we're back to the dwarves. Back to the dwarves. Lots of hoo-ha around the door. Yeah, oh, what can we do? Oh, no, the sun's gone down. That's oh, the last it means the light of, light of the moon. Yeah. And so send Bilbo in to look for the Arkenstone. He kind of... And you don't see Smaug. I, I did like the fact he walks in you don't see Smaug at all. where's this giant dragon? Yeah, and it's like, ooh, okay, he's probably up in the rafters or something. And then... I mean, you see the treasure trove, it raises the question, how does the dwarven economy work if all of their gold is kind of locked in a giant sort of room... Yeah, there's a dragon, and there's a mild panic where Bilbo's kind of like, "Oh, where's the, where's ah, oh, that's a white thing, that's a white thing. What's the Arkenstone? Oh, yes, it's a giant crystal. Ah, it's over there. It's yeah, a smaug. 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 Sean Connery would say, "Smaug, Mr. Smaug, hello." I'd love to see a crossover between the Hobbit and James Bond. Uh, right, so Bilbo Bond. Yeah, so Smaug appears. Smaug. And kind of again, Mr. Smaug, for the it's last time. It's voiced by De Benedict Cumberbatch, which you can hear like quite me to talk, clear. You know, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Well, Smaug does sort of, he, he bears a little bit of similarity to Goldfinger. Yeah, I suppose. Um, um, unfortunately, Smaug doesn't like want to destroy other gold to make his gold more valuable. 
Wow. But yeah, so Spock appears. He's Bender come back is very clearly his voice actor. And sort of, wow. Um, we like Smaug. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm quite excited to show you Smaug, voice. Smaug was done well, and to jump ahead a bit, I was glad that they didn't kill Smaug off after one film. And could yeah. Um, so, you know, he, he was a really cool villain. He sort of... Yeah, we won't give too much away. I mean, I was a little bit concerned when I saw him in the first trailers, but they've done him very well. Yeah, I mean, he, he looks dragony. So, it felt a bit weird that when he was talking, his bot is like... Mouth went so like magic. Ah, how are magic. you? And sort of magic. Yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So the important scene um, that deviates in the book slightly. So obviously in the book, the dwarves never get to confront Schmaug. Schmaug. Ah, oh, yes. But, it's only built, so. Yeah. So in the film, they decide to rush in and help him, and this enables us to. Um, I think this is just to give the audience a bit of payoff. So these dwarves will come on a quest, and they need yeah. to fight this dragon at some point, even though we know it's. Ultimately, going to be fruitless because I mean th that part of the movie, the build up Schmaug is going to burn down Lake Town. The build up to the end of the movie did very much feel like oh fuck, we don't really have anyone to battle at the end. There's no big bad for that, so it's don't kind worry, of like we've got Mewtwo. So it's kind of like a kind of boss battle against Schmaug in that they kind of oh you know they trick him and then yeah. they eventually pour gold on him. Yeah, the, the the gold bit was I like that bit, but I think. Some of the gold CGI didn't look brilliant. I think they yeah. Done that, but um, all done very well. It was interesting. And then... So well, they, they hear Smaug doing something in Lake Town and then we meet Bard again who we find is the descendant of the guy who failed to kill Smaug and he's kept this mysterious black arrow ooh, this is, which could bring down... Uh, which totally isn't sort of going to play off at any point no, in part three. I imagine it would be random guy number seven who kills Schmau. Yeah. Schmau. Well done, Jason. Thanks, mate. Uh, so, sorry if you called Jason, by the way. I'm, I'm sure you're, you're a very... dick and we hate you. I'm sure you're a very talented archer, or maybe you're, not. You're not dreamy uh, enough to be... You're not bad. So, anyway, so it ends... Yeah, oh, with... oh Feely, Femalas and Legolas obviously defeat the orcs who've come down, down turn yeah. up and... Get a bit of flashback to the first film. They use some king's foil to um, to polish oh. up the ring. King's foil to heal him. For some reason he's got a pillow of walnuts at one point. Why not? Feely slash Keely. Uh, and yeah. so that's all fine. We leave them there. And, and then, then so right Smaug. the battle Smaug 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 Smaug. He... He, he, they, so they think he's dead. He's in the molten gold, but he's not. He flies off. <sighs> and then we get the dramatic end line from Bilbo. What have we done? And you released a dragon. Yeah, I mean, it, it so, felt very stereotypical, and to to a point, it's like if if you actually said that to anyone, they just go, "You, you know what you've done? We yeah, just we did, did that." I think, I think the correct expression is sort of "fuck." We've released a fucking dragon. Shit, we're not dead. How yeah. did that happen, Molten? Ah, fuck. He he sounds as if it is possibly not quite his fault. It's like, what have we as a collective done? It's, what, 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 what we, could what this we, mean? What, how could we have changed things? Well, the, they couldn't have done. They nearly killed him. Yeah. Ooh, and then we had a credit song, which we'll get into in soundtrack. But yeah, you know. Um. So right. Right. So that that was our sort of summary and thoughts with lots of bits missed out. Right. So now we'll go to acting. Acting. Um. So. I mean, well, I think once again they've hired very good actors to do it. They yeah, all sort of I mean, this is going to be a really brief part. Yeah, I, they all acted I mean, pretty well. Yeah, I think the, the dwarves had sort of grown into their characters a bit by now. Yeah, they, I mean, they, they all, they, there's not a sort of hideous setup. We know what each individual dwarf is like. And I did kind it. of like the power James Nesbitt's character, Buffer. He slept in, it's like, dear God, is that the time? And sort of like rushed and in a hilarious manner. And, you know, he's sort of he is the comedy character, so it's yeah, well expected. And Richard Armitage sort of pulls off the darker side of Thorin mostly, mm. where he's some gold. Um, any? <coughs> um, I think with Bilbo, he got a bit darker in the film. Yeah, I felt sort of. Yeah, the sort of golemization. Yeah, it, you did. Martin Freeman's like performance was. You did actually genuinely feel like, ooh, this guy's become slightly more corrupt rather than like. Oh, yeah, stereotypical, I'm possessed by the ring kind of stuff. But... Okay, poor actors. Um, so Stephen Fry's assistant, Alfred. 
Oh, God, he, he, yeah. he was fine, he just felt like a bit of a strange character. I mean, Stephen Fry's character seemed plausible in the context of... Yeah, Alfred is just generic, oh, so I'm a butler and I'll do things. So I'm sort of sinister and I'm going to suck up to Mr. Fry. Yeah. He's, it's... he's the Alan Davis of Middle Earth. Yeah, he he, he was unnecessary, yeah. But for the rest of the characters, the... Yeah, the, the, I mean, he wasn't a poor actor. No. He's just... I mean, the way he was, was probably shouldn't be under acting, and should probably be under poor directoral choices. Yeah, I mean, admittedly, neither of us are like experts on acting or sort so of. Any, any, anyone particularly wooden? Is... I couldn't think of anyone like. There was no scene where I just thought, "Oh my god, this is horrible." Sort of. Um, so yeah, uh, fame, fame alas, sort of did kind of breathy LV dialogue, like yeah. Arwen, but yeah, you know, nothing. She, to she could... was doing a pretty good Arwen impression, it was really consistent. Yeah. Um, no complaints. Right. So next item, action. 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 Right. All very. Lots good. of action. Lots of action. All very well that done. That barrel scene. I that, see that no. genuinely brilliant. Like, just ten minutes of CG goodness. Was so, as a part of one of the dwarves, honest family fun. One of the dwarves kind of gets knocked out of the water and then like barrels down and like this, knocks this, over this all bomber where we kind of ah bomber yes we learn that he's an expert fighter after hiding yes all this as time. he kind of like kills loads of orcs and kind of lands and like with two axes and kills people and then and jumps, jumps back in and i mean luckily they had spare barrels yes for some reason i mean and um, and legolas's part was interesting like he had to run on the heads of the things like yeah so he, i mean you know, this this would have been this might have seemed a bit implausible i think they set up yeah. nicely in lord of the rings he can do jumpy things yes i he mean slide down helm's deep on a shield jump on top of the mooma kill shoot in the brain yeah and jump it, on top of a it troll. genuinely it genuinely did feel he, he didn't do the thing where he shoots two arrows at once at disappointing no. and he didn't do his horse thing and he was, oh, yeah. But yeah, but sort of, it, it did feel like sort of they looked at all his best action bits and just gone, let's fucking have him killed loads. And sort of like, he did his like machine gun fire thing, was like, and was like, yeah, I mean, the, you know. the, the, a lot of the action scenes have a bit of a lighter tone than the ones in Lord of the Rings, but I think that's, yes. that's deliberate and not a criticism because it's the book itself has a much lighter tone. In the spider's lair, though, it was quite gory at that, parts. Yeah, that, like, they just stabbed I them think, in the eye and the mouth and kind of... I'm not someone who's scared of spiders, but I can maybe jump a couple of times. Yeah, I mean, I really don't like spiders and that was very creepy. Um, yeah, they didn't They didn't stint on the spiders. They weren't kind of comic happy spiders, though. Yeah, I mean... And we got a bit of... When Bilbo puts the ring on, we can kind of hear what the spiders are talking ooh, about. Oh, yes, that was very... Because at the start, sinister. it's kind of like... It's like... That kind of sounds a bit English, and it's like, oh, ah, oh, okay, it's English. Um, and the Smaug, the Smaug scene was very good, I thought. Like, oh yeah, Smaug, yeah. That running was... away from him, just like... Yeah, Smaug was very sinister in the way they... Yeah, I mean, he was terrible. Also, I love the, his stomach glows before he breathes fire. Yes. And That's lot, incredibly lots of, sinister. Lots of nice scenes of him kind of smashing gold things and... Yes, and I'm just generally being a really pissed off dragon, and you know, can't it's a grumpy him. dragon. Yeah, yeah. He, he's not a like happy Game of Thrones dragon. He'll sort of burn someone occasionally. So. Yes, right. Um, he's a dick. Soundtrack. Soundtrack. Um, well, only thoughts on the soundtrack is it seems to build more on Lord of the Rings. Yeah. Lord of the Rings soundtrack that it did on the previous film. I mean, there was also a bit of continuation. I mean, I can't. No, no criticism. I like the soundtrack of the first film, and yeah. I can't really place much about I mean, I, the second. I, I feel less inclined somehow. to buy this one than I did the previous one. Yeah, but it did its job well, and nothing struck me as like wow. Ooh, but equally nothing. There, there, there wasn't a moment like in Return of the King where you get the um, the music as the Riders of Rohan charge. There wasn't, yeah, there wasn't uh, a moment like that sort of with an epic soundtrack. Ooh, also there's yeah. the credit song. Ed Sheeran. I, right, I, I like it. Really? I I think I listened to it once in your room and sort of half of it as we left. It it's pretty good. Again, they sort it, of build on the lines that Thorin says. Yeah, it 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 didn't. I we don't die. We'll all burn together. I don't think it had as much impact. Like the first one, well, like Misty Mountains was a hell of a song. It's just well, uh, so the, this is the kind of pop music crossover. So the one in the previous was by I can't remember. But yeah, but that that was in the credits. What's his face from the New Zealand face band? Hmm. But I I I really liked Misty Mountains. Felt really good. 
Because there, there wasn't a Misty one, Mountains equivalent. There, wasn't there was no sing-along. No with Happy Campfire song. Yeah, which, which I, I was disappointed because the book has a few of them, if I remember correctly. I, I don't think there's one at this point. I mean, there's various songs that people sing when... Yeah, I mean, I don't know. They could have shoehorned one in, I think, if they can get Fem Femalas in. Yes. So, um, last one. Book comparison. Well, can, can I just jump, because there was a bit of, um, sort of, Bard did a bit of almost Eddard Stark-style investigation where he kind of burst into the tapestry shop. Like, can I see this tapestry? Mm -hmm. It's over there. God, it is Thorin. I needed the tapestry to confirm this. <laughs> he is the son yeah. of Thrain. So, yeah. Um, Book comparisons. Oh, actually, wait, while what, we're on... What, what's our other... While we're on a little sort of Ta bit of like little bits of tangent, doing yeah. Bit well, of there was the there was the nod to Gimli. Nod no, no to Gimli was I think yeah. They last described him as a sort of goblin mutant or something. Yeah, it, it was very it was <laughs> subtle <laughs> sort of friends one day. It was subtle and unlike you know a brief like oh what is there oh his name's Gimli ah get it audience ah. hi see ya um see ya book comparison book comparison um. Right, you're going to have to basically be at the helm of this entire thing. I'll... Right, okay, so book comparison. Uh, any glaring thing... Right, well, we'll start with Femalas. Well, obviously Femalas wasn't there. She just um, didn't exist. No, she's a, she's a complete creation of Peter Jackson. And I mean, it's, it's not horrible. Prices, you know, she... Fran Walsh and Philip the Boy and... It wasn't, it wasn't like Jar Jar Binks. She wasn't like shoehorned in and was like, Oh, get her away! It was more no, like... No. I think we needed a hilarious comic relief character. So yes. Like a George R. Bink style orc who's actually good. <laughs> sort of streetwise African American orc played by Eddie Murphy. <laughs> the implications of that would be glorious. Um, right. Femalas. OJ orc. Yes. Femalas didn't ruin the plot. She. No. Um, she brought a very small love triangle into it, which wasn't there. Would Tolkien approve of Femalas? I don't know. I think not, but yeah. equally, no. I think in some talkers of the work you do get kind of fighty girl elves and... Yeah, I mean, I'm sure she was inspired from his other works and stuff. It wasn't just like bullshit, it's like, we need a girl that can do stuff. Yeah, I, I don't think Tolkien would have outright rejected the concept, but he no. probably wouldn't have particularly liked the way... Um... Yeah, it, it did feel a bit pandering. Yeah, I, I think it will certainly appeal to the majority of the fans. Yeah, I mean, well, I, th I think it's proven that, like, a lot of the fans that went, like, die hard into the film, the, like, the big fans of the film, like, happen to be girls, I think. Um, so, I mean, it, it may have possibly been their kind of way of kind of going, like, well, you know, we need a female character who's actually main role rather than, like, Ah, this is Tavern Wench number three. I mean, right? yes, so the, the only f credited female in the first one was Galadriel. Yes. Two credited females this time. Yeah, oh, I, I mean... I've got Bard's daughters as well. There's yeah. at least oh, four yeah. women out of at least 5,000 men. <laughs> yeah, it is a very man-heavy film. Sort of. Man-heavy. But then I guess Lord of the Rings are quite man-heavy as well. I mean, yeah. less so, but, you know. Um, right, Legolas. Well, according to the sort of timeline, Legolas should technically be there. I mean, yeah. it's, it's not mentioned in any of the books or appendices what Legolas is up to at this point, so he might as well be there. He's the son of King Thranduil of the Woodland Realm, who is certainly in The Hobbit, so... Yeah, I mean... It... I think he was there because he was in the Lord of the Rings films and people wanted him back, and he could do lots of Legolas yeah. and things that we all know and love. That again felt a bit pandering and kind of just like... Didn't you guys anything. like Legolas, right? Oh, I but, got but while, while he was on set, Peter Jackson did make him do the Hobbits are going to Isengard kind of. Oh movie, but yes, uh, that, so that more than makes up for any criticisms at all of Legolas. And, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, no, I was totally happy. Yeah, with it seemed a little unnecessary, but I imagine that he's going to feature in the Battle of the Five Armies in the next film. So and also, it'll pay off that they've put him there. Yeah, I mean, if thankfully as well, he didn't he didn't play too much of a like. Interference with the dwarves. He was kind of like was doing more, his own more around thing. the edges. Yes. Yeah, he kind of appeared in the background, kind of 
when when um, Keely or Feely was ill, he didn't really stick around. He was just like, I'm going to go and hunt orcs. Yeah, it's like, I'm going to go kill the orcs because they're killing people. Um, just stay here and do your girl thing. Right. Any other glaring well, differences? I, I mean, if, if we can talk about it as a whole, like mm. I was saying, it's... When, when you're turning in a book in a sort of... I don't know how, how long it is. I cannot remember, but quite a short children's book into nine and a half hours worth of footage. Yeah, I mean... You're going to have to add a bit and pad it out and I think in order to make it into a compelling or three compelling films I don't object to the reimagining of a lot of scenes to make them more action oriented. Yeah, I mean because the, the barrel scene... Well, while it's, the barrel scene is certainly a compelling scene and it's got a lot of tension in the book, I think in the film, it works nicely, but they have it a nice action scene. Yeah. So, um... Um... Uh, if you go to yeah. overall views? Well, staying on the book, it, 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 it's all there, I think. Hmm. Yeah, they didn't miss Die anything book purists, I think, will be able to appreciate it as The Hobbit, hmm. and will be able to sort of view it not as a direct adaptation of the book but as a yes as a a good a faithful reimagining that's sort of in the spirit of the book it's got the same light-hearted tone yes exactly any other glaring omissions or well we already talked about Mirkwood that's the one yeah I, would, I think they, they turned what could have been the more subtle sort of creepy wood sequence into glaring the obvious creepy wood sequence hmm. and there was Resisted the temptation to put a tree beard cameo in there. So. Yeah, oh god, that would have been horrible. That would, I mean, I guess tree beard would have roughly been the same age because they're thousands of years old or hundreds. Really. I mean, that the tree beard lives in Fangorn Forest and that's Mirkwood, so they probably worked out that people wouldn't yes. have appreciated it if I mean, yeah. tree beard had turned up. They could have been, yes, hello. <laughs> um, sort of, it turns out Bilbo is climbing the tree beard. Book, 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 book. Um, well, Bard's role has been expanded. Yeah. But nothing that sort of detracts from. Hmm. I mean, anything. I think I'm... I think they needed Bard to sort of push, the, give us an introduction to Lake Town. I take away the idea that sort of they've not subtracted anything and they've just added stuff, which sort of yeah can be bad. The, but the it's... spirit of the book is it's true to the spirit of the book. Yeah. Well, that's good. um. A bit of confusion about Gandalf, so I think in the book it implies that... So a lot of the stuff it do with Gandalf and the Necromancer is, obviously isn't in The Hobbit, but is mm. alluded to and there's various references. So there's a, a short story called The Quest for Erebor, which they also base part of the screenplay on. But, mm. Which is a sort of... A Gandalf sort of tells the story of The Hobbit to Frodo from a different perspective. So oh, I see. Oh, that's cool. It's part of the appendices. Yeah. Um, so I think in that they imply that Gandalf has been in was in the Necromancer's dungeon before um, this all happened. So oh. within the context of the film, Gandalf doesn't know where um, Thorin's father is. So, and they were talking about him in the opening scene. So I think Gandalf is probably going to run into Papa Thorin in um, Thrain in hmm. the next film, and he's going to tell him something important. Uh. Either that, or they're not building up to it, and they yeah. They've cast the Thrain as an actor. He was there in the prologue, so Ooh. Ooh. I mean, it would make sense that if he was there. But mm. in, in in the book, he gives Gandalf the map, so I don't know what purpose he's going to have. Yeah. Maybe Thorin will have sort of heartfelt reunion with his father. Oh. Or maybe his father will become king again, because I don't know whether the cast of character is to be King Dane or not. Ooh. So I'll have to look up that one. Mm. There we are. So, uh, yeah, a lot of the Gandalf... I think some people might object to the Gandalf storyline, but most of it is there. Yeah. Radagast is the complete addition to the book. He's only mentioned once in the book, which is in yeah. Bilbo's house. I mean, he, I think he's partly there due to, like... They couldn't stick he him, was they the couldn't, doctor. They couldn't stick him in the, um, in the Fellowship of the Rings, and they, they couldn't resist using a nice character like Radagast. Exactly. Hopefully he'll come back and do something fun in the battle. And yes, he'll ride rabbits like through a horde of orcs, crushing hilarious. 
Right. Um, right. Any other points of discussion we need to move on to before I mean, overall I views? I think it's just overall views. No, I can't think of any other so aspect of the, the soundtrack. Um, soundtrack. Acting. Dishiest character. I don't know. Uh, in a Lego Lass was pretty dishy. Yeah. Thorin was pretty dishy. Yeah. Uh, Gandalf. Baby Gimli. <laughs> <laughs> sort of small drawing of baby Gimli. His wife. Drawing of Gloin's wife. Yeah, yeah. So I'm sure you'll take that to bed with you. Yeah, uh, yeah. So yeah, um, overall thoughts. If you had to give it a rating out of ten. Nine. Okay. I yeah, I, I'd agree. Nine, nine I'd say the nine, sort of which is way better than the well, okay, not way better than the first film. Comparison to the first film. Good. The first I would have given an 8, a solid 8. This I'd give a 9, possibly like 9.2 or something. But oh, Another nice addition, I think in the first film a lot of the orcs felt a bit too CG -y, and they, they seem to have gone back to um, using a combination of CG and actors yes. to portray the orcs, which felt a bit better. Overall, I would suggest Overall, going yeah, to see go it. Yeah, go see it. I'm going to see it again, hopefully. Yeah, and I, I'm probably going to have the friends want to go see it. And stuff, and uh, you don't have any other friends, <laughs> and um, you know, maybe instead of buying the Hobbit extended edition of the first part, we'll see this instead a second time. And, well, you know, buy, buy the extended edition as well. I mean, I guess, but I'm mean, not sure how much extra time you get with it. I think it's like 16 minutes. Sixteen minutes is fine. I can cope with sixteen minutes. It's probably something like Bill eats a pie, and then he drops the pie, and then. Well, I think I'm, I'll be. I'll, I'll get it when when they all come out in a box set. Yeah, same. Them. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching. Yeah, so if you new laws dictate we can't play your except from the soundtrack. So. But in the background, you will have noticed in this video that we will be singing uh, some of the songs from Lord of the Rings, and hopefully. Copy YouTube copy them and pick it up in it because it's not the fucking soundtrack. Yes, yeah, so we'll should, 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 should we fade out with um, the orchestra with? I think this might be the Rise of Rohan theme. And, no, it's not Rise of Rohan. I think it's a, it's a bit more here. But anyway, dun 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 I mean, dun 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 Goodbye. Bye, Goodbye. loyal audience. Bye. Right. right, let's see how this shit looks. That was almost an hour.